Welcome to this overproduced video about another thing nobody cares about. And welcome to 1994. This was my holy grail. All because of design and marketing. Look at that folder. And look at the countless buttons. And it has so many features. It was very desirable. And this photo is a piece of art. This line is not part of the design. It's the edge of a poster that the photographer used to accentuate the crystal cut front panels. It might not have been the intention to see the poster edge. And the photographer might have been surprised that it was used. It even inspired me to sketch this design a few years later. Recreating that 28-year-old photo as a widescreen video was a bit of a hassle. The unit I found seemed to be a barn find. When even the heads deep in the cassette deck are covered in fine dust, you know it has not been used for a long time. But that's good news for the displays, because the brightness decreases when it's in use for many years. But the covers lost their clarity, which turned out to be some kind of removable deposit. Ew. However, there was a bigger problem, and it took me a while to realize. Can you see it? The previous owner purposefully and violently removed the feet. Why would you do that? Toodles! Nice! Oh dear! Feet! Now owning the only two I saw for sale the past few years, one in the Netherlands and one in Germany, I combined the best components to create one flawless UD952. I even swapped these metal panels because the one with feet had wear off on the print. I also had a remote now, nice of the previous owners, to leave the protective plastic on. And meanwhile, it was time to say farewell to this old Philips cabinet. After recording some final sound effects. Then I printed and stitched one of my countless sunset photos, blacked out the spaces, created a sound to match the analyzer shape, and all I needed then were some lights and tripods. I also filmed that sunset, which I added in the background later. And voila! A widescreen video version of the legendary product photo. You may have noticed these. The optional omnidirectional speakers. And because they're optional, there is a cover that seals the hole. They are active speakers with their own power supply, power button and volume control, which become inaccessible when placed. But that's okay because the special line output changes volume. And the set has a switched power outlet. They disperse the sound in all directions, something that normal speakers do not do. You can change the balance between the main and omnis. Let's do that to compare the difference in a real-world situation. I'll play an unfinished version of my latest track using this Bluetooth receiver that sounds like a balanced line signal. It's made by Ear Studio, 
Link in the description. In my opinion, even from the side, it sounds better without the Omnis. But they sure look desirable. But in Germany, they disagreed with that. The German version has completely different two-way speakers, with no space for the omnidirectionals. The 82-page German manual has a special inlay for them. But you could of course still place the Omnis on top of the speakers. How lovely! The original speakers almost scream, we are from the 90s! But how do they sound? In this recording they almost sound better than my studio monitors, which is weird. But in real life they are missing some mid-range and the mid-lows are a bit prominent. And it's also missing that direct punch. But they sound quite good, especially considering it's made in 1994. In good Kenwood tradition, buttons are difficult to read, because it makes the design prettier. But let's demonstrate the DSP effect. Yes, that's digital signal processing, where you can choose various simple delay and echo effects that you will never want to use. But it looks oh so cool in the catalog. In the four channel mode, those effects are sent only to the Omni speakers. And I can use that line signal to capture the effect dry. My own special hardware effects box. It also has Dolby Pro Logic Surround, which roughly rebuilds surround from a special stereo mix but it does that with all stereo sound. Though the center speaker often was much smaller, it worked quite well, because low sounds that the center cannot produce are still produced by the mains, or the optional subwoofer, which in my case was disintegrating from edge. Another opportunity to record some sound effects. Let's talk about dual sound. That allows you to play two sources at the same time. Very useful. In the marketing they give an example of playing nature sounds through the Omnis while playing music through the main speakers. What a great idea! This is the 7-band graphical equalizer, which also has a 7-band analyzer with 12 fake bands in between. The analyzer has four different styles. And it has a demonstration function. There are various functions that claim to optimize the sound in certain situations. It even has an AI button, which stands for Acoustic Intelligence. It claims to scan the CD and create an optimized equalizer preset for it. Judging by this particular result, it doesn't do a very good job. And it's a very bad idea anyway. Especially when doing this on a studio album. So, how do you make sure all these optimizations are disabled? Just in case you want to, you know, listen to music? Well, that's where my favorite button comes into play. The Source Direct button. The irony. Let's quickly talk about the CD player, which has a very satisfying mechanism. It combines a normal player with a 6-CD changer. 
this type never became popular in home hi-fi, and I'll demonstrate why in this demonstration. Huh? Changing a disc is a rather complex task. On both my units, CDs from the changer won't play. For some reason they are grabbed incorrectly. Another sound effect, oh, sorry. And of course a few words about the cassette deck. No display, but a beautiful row of buttons with LEDs. It missed out on a nice power-up animation, but thanks to editing it looks like it does. However, in the mechanism are LEDs that do animate. They kind of indicate the tape direction and speed when re-recording. Not too useful, but very satisfying. Well, that's enough about that, I think. Please check out my new track, Just Play A Song. That's the name of the track. I prefer the instrumental version. It lives there now. I've decided not to collect more gear than fits in here. Hmm. I've also decided that to save the environment I'll only power one set at a time. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon on this channel that's supposed to be about everything and nothing. So I better stop collecting stereo sets.